Hello, this is KC Steve. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do a 2010 year in review of all the artifacts that I found uh, at different campsites that I had found last year. Today's date is January the 11th of 2011. And this first display, I, display case I found at a camp um, on the 23rd of January of 2010. It was a nice early military camp. Um, it had some dragoon buttons and some rifle buttons and an artillery button and some other nice artifacts inside the camp. I had located this camp through research and uh, there was a creek that was mentioned. Uh, searched a, a long time trying to locate this along this creek trying to locate this camp and I finally found it. Um, and what I'd like to do is just show you in detail some of the artifacts that I pulled from this site. Um, we'll start with the bu military buttons. There's a nice dragoon button. That was the first military button found on this site and it's got a, it looks like some silver gilt inside the, the shield but it might be go more than likely it's gold. And then of course I found another early Dragoon button. And there's a real nice... And these are all cuff size. And then I found an artillery button. Cuff size. Then I found a coat sized rifle, rifleman button. Um, missing the shank. But that was real nice. It just seems like some of the early camps that I find have a mix of these three. The rifle, artillery, and dragoon. Seems like they're always, for some reason, they're always together. Um, as far as the bullets, found a real nice ringtail sharps. I think that's 54 caliber. Those are neat to find. Um, nice bullet there. Nice round ball. Some other pieces of lead. Buckles. Shards of china pottery whatever. Here's a little medallion. I think they call these miraculous metals. I think that's really neat. Seems like I find at least one of these in every camp that I find. These soldiers wore these all the time. Um, spoon handle. Black glass. Um, not sure what that is if it's a bracelet of some sort I don't know it's got attachments on each side um, got an odd odd button right there it looks like pineapples or something on it got a nice 1854 seated quarter it's got scratches on it but what do you expect in a plowed field? The reverse side is pretty good. Uh, this wa was a large scent, but it's a slick one. Can't read anything off of it. This right here is a Confederate, or uh, Confederate, is a counterfeit half dollar. See the eagle right there? Right there's the head, right there's the wings, made of, made of lead, it's a reverse side, the obverse, I, I can't really make out, but there's, there's a seated figure on there, I'm sure. It seems like guys post a lot of uh, counterfeit coins on, on the internet. It must have been a pretty heavy practice back then 
because we find a lot of them in camps. Um, and of course you'll find the usual toe taps or toe plates. This and there's a powder flask right there or top of a powder flask. This item right here is what I call a crotal bell. It's pretty early too. Um, if you look at the base, you've got initials EHCT. That stands for East Hampton, Connecticut. And the other side says W. Bevins. When I posted this on the uh, internet, somebody thought it'd be thought that they heard that the Bevins company was still in business. So I sent them an email and had mentioned that I had found this bell in Kansas and uh, much to my surprise they sent me an email back. Uh, a guy by the name of Matt Bevan sent me this email back and he says, uh, Steve you have discovered one of the earliest bells made by our company it was most likely made between 1830 and 1840. Uh, Bevan Brothers was founded in 1832 by a Williams Bevins, the one whose initials are on your bell. He was my great 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 grandfather's brother. He was eventually joined by three of his brothers. In the early years he put his initials on the bells to differentiate them from others that were being made at that time by other bell makers. He says that this practice stopped during the early years of working with his brothers. And then of course Matt says you have discovered a nice treasure that is almost certainly over 170 years old. So finding something like this to me is just it's really fascinating to be able to connect with history. Uh, how it got from Connecticut clear to Kansas, I I mean, it's anyone's guess. But that's history to me and that's that's what I like about relic hunting. Being able to identify something and and trace its history. Very, very fascinating. So this concludes the first display case of the camp that was found uh, January twenty third of uh, 2010 and we'll I'll show you some of the other displays from the other camps throughout the year